Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Plenty with Sulo. Our venue partner Hatch, hair and makeup headmasters, our clothing partner G Flock, and our camera partner Cabra Hub. Be tuned to Daily Mirror Online. have a special guest from the private sector, I would say private sector, business sector and also from the social service. So we are going to talk about how impactful this person has been to the society and to the business world. So today our guest is Mr. Ajit Veerasinghe who is the CEO of CIC Feeds Group and also the present governor of Ratri. Sri Lanka. Hello, Rajit. Hello, Let me Sula. call you Ajit. Fine. Ajit, before we proceed, if I ask you to do a self-introduction, will you do that for me, please? Of course, yes. So, as you correctly said, uh, I am the present uh, governor for Rotary International for Sri Lanka and Maldives, because the one district, the Sri Lanka and Maldives fall into one category. Okay. So, I am the head of the Rotary International for this area. Then, uh, in professionally, I am the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Feeds Group, where we have four companies uh, under okay. me. And, uh, of course, there are many social organizations that I am in, where I have been struggling to come out. <laughs> uh, so, I am the present President of Ave Maria Welfare Society, okay. and present Vice President of uh, Gampa Cricket Association. Okay. And I am the Chairman of the most dangerous thing, disciplinary committee of Sri Lanka cricket. So, other than the past uh, accolades. So, that is your profession, business and the social. In your personal life, if you can tell me, uh, you're married, I think you have daughters, right? Am I yes. correct? Yes, hello. I'm married uh, to Samudri. Uh, we are from Nigambo, that's okay. our native place. I have two daughters, both are married. And I'm a grandfather oh, okay. with a granddaughter. <laughs> with a granddaughter. Yes. So how it has become being in a women's world uh, the only man? Yes. So it's like the king, uh, you know, <laughs> among the ladies. <laughs> so it's, it's not like, you know, even daughters, they say, when you have a strong <laughs> father, the daughters are brought up with a lot of freedom and they are given <laughs> that personality. Is it true in your family? I should partially I agree with you, but maybe when it comes to daughters, I think for some extent selfishness is there. Okay. Where fathers are unable to come out of, I guess. So I have given them enough freedom, but then in certain time instances, always we feel like they should be around us. The security is there. Probably, yes. Yeah. So coming from, uh, as you said, uh, in your, if I take you out from your business world, to look at the now you said you are in the disciplinary committee so the discipline how how you got into that disciplinary committee i feel the the board the executive committee would have seen my abilities and my uh, qualities otherwise they wouldn't have chosen me to the disciplinary committee because that is something very unique so you have to be always do the just so uh, in my whatever the career professional may it be my personal thing I have been doing the right thing always. So doing the right thing got into that. It's because I saw your profile says from your school, you are being in the, doing sports, so good in studies, and you have been coming up on a very disciplinary way. Maybe that's what uh, they must have seen. So uh, let me speak about, you know, you are the present governor who was elected for Rotary International for Sri Lanka and Maldives. What is your role will be? So there are 70 clubs throughout the, the district, we call it, one in Maldives and 69 in Sri Lanka. 
So they are scattered from Jaffna, I mean north to east, north to south and east to west. So all over Sri Lanka and different communities, I have to give the leadership. They are managing independently, but the uh, district is, is there to administer them for certain areas and to give guidance to them. So basically, Rotary is the first social organization and uh, came into Sri Lanka almost about 100 years ago. So we have been doing so much of good things to the people in need. So, uh, I mean, the Rotarians who are there have their natural interest of doing something for the people. So because of that, I think I also came through that the same uh, mentality. So I was able to give the leadership to Rotary. Uh, so all Rotarians, I mean, they're doing amazing things even during COVID time. So how, what did it take to come, be a governor? How, what, what's the process? How you can be a governor? Uh, there is a quite uh, stringent and a lengthy process. Uh, I don't know how did I got in there <laughs> because I didn't have any intention of uh, becoming the governor, neither in the other positions. I think that is a message that I need to give for the youth, honestly, because my career, I have never looked for any uh, positions. It has come after me. So as long as you behave and you do right things, uh, then your professionalism can be seen by the society. You will be given all these opportunities. I totally agree. Now the young generation, not I won't say young, all the, all people are going behind brands to build a brand in, within them. But they forget that they are the whole brand. So as you said, <laughs> it didn't. you didn't go through, you didn't want it, but it came to you because they saw something in you. So as you said, the Rotary has been doing a amazing work in Sri Lanka. Rotary has been a very professional business network as well as a social network. So if you can just explain what is the what is the objective because some people think Rotary is for social service, some people think it's for a professional network. Is it both available or how it get connected? So no, it is a combination of everything and you can add even fellowship to there. Okay. Because ultimately, people, human beings cannot live alone. Yeah. They have to be with others. So this is a social networking together with the business professionals around to support each other. Because right. the Rotary was formed initially uh, in the USA to share the business opportunities uh, between them. Okay. So gradually it developed and then, then they started to do social activities. Uh, you know, around that area, which flourished all the 200 countries in the world, having 35,000 clubs and uh, 1.2 million Rotarians all over the world. So what's the place for women in Rotary? Of course, it has been identified many decades ago by Rotary International. So they have been uh, insisting and promoting that uh, same percentage in the whole globe should represent Rotary. And we have come to about 24, 25%, but yet to grow. Okay. Uh, that is, some of the countries predominantly, like uh, South Asia, if you look at the men dominating area, so very little women you find in Rotary. Most of the cases, the women are actively involved, but they are not members, very unfortunately. Oh, okay. right. Even in Sri Lanka, for that matter, I visited some of the clubs uh, recently and most of those clubs are very active coming from metropolitan areas but not a single lady member in that club, those clubs. So their culture had been the men predominantly they do the things but fully supported by the ladies. That is the beauty of it. So I have been telling them so they are there anyway with your fellowship, with your projects. Whatever you do, even trips, picnics, they are there. So why don't you take them in? So I hope that things will happen. But in general, in most of the clubs, I should say, they, are, they have started a few years back. So ladies are coming into the scene. Because we have seen in the world, uh, the ladies have a very unique position placed even in our professional uh, world today. Yeah. So the coming back to your professional life now, you are the CEO on the uh, CIC, I think, field group. 
So before you became the CEO, you must have come on a way. So if you can just explain how, because everyone look up, look up for a CEO and thinks that it's easy to be there. I always say it's easy to go there, but it's very difficult to retain there. So if you can tell us the, your journey to become the CEO. You are perfectly right, Zulu. One of the weakness I see with the youth today is the moment they, they get into a job, they look for the very high thing and the perks. Yeah. So our career did not come on that way, not through the rose, rose gardens. So it was uh, 33 years my service at CIC alone. Okay. So started as a very junior person uh, at the clerical level. And then subsequently, again, there are the promotions I never looked for. And my study studies also, I just got everything, you know, but I didn't, I didn't spend much of the time. They were doing more sports, but I was, according to the teachers and my friends, I was very clever. So my bosses too would have seen that. So gradually I was able to climb the, the ladder and without knowing to me, so I have come to this level, you know, I've been the very senior position for more than 15, 20 years. And then I've come to this position about two years ago. So it is basically the commitment, mm -hmm. not, not, you know, short time or short term. It has been there throughout. When there was a work, honestly, I have not seen the time or the days or the period. And challenge something I have been taking throughout my life. So may it be the business or the professional or even the social or personal career. So therefore, uh, the youth must realize those challenges are inevitable. Sometimes they look for a comfortable path. Yeah. But challenges need to be there to mold you. Mm. So that you will always find ways and means how to overcome these challenges. Yeah. So my career, to answer your question basically, is full of challenges where I have addressed them properly, analyzed myself and the situations properly and taken it forward. That is where I am today. So you have seen challenges as opportunities for you to grow. Exactly. That's how Exactly. It. Even during COVID, I must add that, the people were so much scared of coming out of the home, out of homes. And for that matter, I take as a privilege to work in a essential service area. Yeah. Even my other competitors in the essential service area, they were scared. They said, essential, how do we do? But I got my company to work continuously from the following day itself, even now 24 by 7. So that is the determination, the challenge I took. And that paid results. So, I see, sir, I'm coming to that essential here, you're into agriculture and all that. Sri Lanka has been a country with agriculture. Now the culture is coming again. But, you know, a farmer doesn't want his children to be a farmer, right? They want to get a degree. So then when you get a degree and being a farmer or doing agriculture business, people ha has perception, Sri Lanka has a lot of perception because we were judged by our position's designation, not but what we are delivering. So how do you think Sri Lanka can again get that um, honor being a farmer, agriculture trade? Do you think Sri Lanka can go into that? You are right, Sulo. The perceptions in our mentality or the people that have been a tradition, Yeah. always they look for the, the position. Uh, they want to, the farmers, children, they want to educate them. They feel that they are, they are suffering. So they want to bring their children out of that. Yes. The reasons being probably they wouldn't have got the returns, anticipated returns. If that is so, the children would have been there. Yeah. So I think gradually these things will change because the technology has to come into the agricultural sector, which is being uh, advocated by the government as well as the private sector largely, because uh, they have seen otherwise the farmers themselves will not be competitive. So the technology is already going in. We have seen in certain segments, for example, my uh, business where with the animal feeds and animal growing and all, the technology has come to a very, very uh, extreme level. Yeah. And we are matching for that matter any international standard. 
Okay. So the those farmers children you can call the livestock farmer and they have they are not going out of that. Okay. That's they are not going. Is. I have worked I'm working today with the third generation. Okay. So their grandfather knew me when I was a young salesman where I have gone and met them. So where I have opportunity to meet them now. But apparently when they invite for something, you know, some people invite for 25 year celebrations. So then only a few in this trade, in the business level, who could join there. Oh. These others have gone out. But then, then I meet the third generation who are running the show. I know by the name, so I know. So they are, okay, grandfather is this, father is this. So none of them have gone out of the business. So as long as they have the technology to bring it to certain level, then they'll be working with all modern equipment. So they need, so the youth are capable of doing that. So in the real agriculture sector, we still find some farmers, but certain segments, I think they have not reached that level. Maybe the ministries and the private sector, they're working on it. They will have to add and do something more to bring the new technologies in so that the children, youth, will remain. Otherwise, as you correctly said, we might have a problem. Who yeah. is going to do that? Because it's like this. We, we, we are a country, nation, I would say. Perceptions matters then. And also, we wanted to hold a designation and a visiting card and say, mm -hmm. this is me, right? And they, we, we respect according to the job we are doing. But we do not know the value system and all that. So, uh, coming back again to the Rotary, how it has been impact the young youth professionals and especially the enterprises because i know rotary has done so much of things sri lanka as you said the polio was zero was put yeah. by rotary that was one of the major projects they all did in sri lanka and we came the first uh, i think the country to go polio zero so now the economy in sri lanka is struggling and uh, not only sri lanka but sri lanka is struggling a lot so what is the rotary's role for the young professionals as well as the enterprises. What do you think Rotary can do more? Thank you, Silo, bringing that topic of the polio free Sri Lanka, which uh, I think partially the credit must go to Rotary. They have worked very hard, even Sri Lankan level and the international level, where the monies are flowing even today. Every child born is vaccinated with uh, polio vaccine. So coming back to your question of the youth, uh, the Rotary has identified this internationally itself. That is why we have a youth arm called Rotaract, who are the young professionals, yeah. just after maybe after schooling. Also, we have interactors. They are the ones who are in the O level, A level category. So, what Rotary does is to improve their leadership qualities and to educate them and mentor them, right? for the marketplace so that when they develop within the school, when they come out of the school, obviously they are seen as little different to others. Because the mentoring is done by the senior Rotarians of a particular club in that vicinity area where they sponsor that club. So their responsibility is to see that, educate and guide them to the through the proper channels for their development, career, career developments, so forth. So, what Rotary has done other than that, uh, we can see, I can give you a good example, bringing the latest uh, COVID, uh, the pandemic. Now, they are probably the first organization other than the government body who came out of a theme to get the people to think little more. Yeah. Right? With the theme of stop the spread. So these nice words are, I know, being used in Sri Lankan community today very well. And then we took a lot of effort through our clubs, not only giving dry rations this and that, distributing masks this and that, those are um, simple things. So this is not visible, not tangible, but we brought this thinking, if you establish a safe environment, this sort of thing will happen. If the economy collapses, of course, certain level it has happened. But then if it continue to happen, if you get outbreaks continuously, yeah. then we have no future. So we understood this. Therefore, we brought this concept. 
educate, teach them, teach them. Government has been doing it from their part, but through our clubs, through the youth, we brought this message. And today, I can tell you, the institutions where these youth are and the children, our interactors where they are, the whole sets of children are continuously being educated, reminded. Because education, they know it. You know, we have to be safe, we have to be careful, follow the protocols. But what matters is to follow these protocols continuously. Yes. So that is being done by Rotary in a large scale. Not stopping their slow, coming into the, the other core area of education with the private uh, or the partnership uh, with Krishels in Sri Lanka and uh, Rotary and our Rotract. We came out with a uh, the different thing to get the SMEs activated. Yeah. And for example, we already started in Badullo Alla area, where the hotels and small uh, boutique hotels kind of thing, to uh, continue, they, they have draw up, you know, even the itineraries, different itineraries, and all that for the local market. And in the even the foreign market is open, that will be given. So, the publicity is totally taken care of by taken care of uh, by Rotary Rotract our youth arm, and the certification. The next step what Rotary took forward is taken continuously forward by our youth arm Rotractors and Interactors to get a SLSI certification. So this is again public might think you know why certification. That is to ensure the continuity of the good practices. Yeah. So these. Uh, Com combining with the SLSI and convincing the owner or the key decision maker the importance of having a certification so that you can build the trust, confidence of your stakeholders. You can say we are this hotel or this restaurant is free or you can say COVID control environment. You will definitely step in there. You yes. know that you are coming from a safe environment but then, when you step in into a different place, you have your doubts. I think it will have more impact when the airport is open, sure. when the foreigners come, then they will look at it when it's educated. They know it's a very safe Correct. environment. By the time the airport open, the Rotary, and of course that's the vision of government too, wants to make sure that the majority of Sri Lankans are following. They know the threat. They suffered at home, so they know the threat. But to follow the good practices. Yeah. So then, you know, when, when you get the threat, you know. I think that's a great initiative from Rotary. So finally, I'll ask you, Ajit, for you to be CEO, you said you came on all that. Now you are a CEO, you are a social service, Rotary International Governor, you are a father, you are a grandfather. Mm -hmm. You have completed like, you know, the humans are going to achieve something, you have completed everything. Is it a self-satisfaction you get now or that you are thinking that you know, you have a responsibility towards Sri Lanka as a to make more citizens like you. If you are given that opportunity, <laughs> what are the three things you will want to develop in Sri Lanka? So, no, yes, human beings will never satisfy. So, my case, I never look for anything. But then, if I can do much more through Rotary for the general public, which we are doing, because that is within my system. Yeah. So I would like to continue the, to do the good thing for the people. So always when you promote, that is why even for the youth, we brought another, this thing, Sulo, just to add, little mind, strong values. So this also we are promoting through Montessori's, through songs developed by our own Rotarian, a very good musician. That is because we know the society today, when we go out, there is something wrong the way people behave. So this is coming from smaller days to yeah. our system. So if you can correct the next generation, time to come, gradually, you might not be able to do in a great way, but then we have taken some initiative, some effort to get these young, small children to follow the good practices. On the Purudu follow Karanda, we are trying our big effort. So likewise, the values to give it back to the children so exactly. that they will be, yes. So that uh, end of the day, I mean, we can satisfy that we have done something to the society. Ultimately, not to you, but if you do something to the society, 
that is the satisfaction that I could do anyone can. I get. totally agree. And thank you, Ajit. You have given a, I think, a broad um, explanation about a success because success is not about a position. Success is all about having a family, having a, a job, having doing things for society, and also making an impact. So I think you are a great inspiration for many of us, especially me also because I also looked at. Uh, when you when you when you look talking about you know doing a CEO job and also doing sitting on so many committees and still delivering that's a challenge and thank you so much for joining as Ajit said think about your values and don't go behind your positions because positions comes to you if you are the right person thank you everyone.